G'day, welcome to the lab. My name is Michael and today I'm going to be showing you our Raspberry Pi Zero W installed into a Pi Girl 2 project. So here's the project and as you can see it's currently running the NAS Classic Super Mario Brothers. So let's just have a look at how responsive this is quickly. I'm just going to start a new game and you can see that there's no lag whatsoever. I can, it's very playable. In fact, I'm not got a bit carried away with, my, with myself there, just running the whole way. It's been a long time since I've tried to speed run. But you can see that the there's no delay in how the game works. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna get that mushroom. I'm, I'm, you know, I like to live dangerously. So it's actually, I mean, it's it is incredibly playable um, on running on a Raspberry Pi Zero W. Of course, the Pi Zero W is running at it has a gigahertz processor, so it's more than capable of doing these old style games like NES and SNES games. So let's take a quick look at the at the package, shall we? Let's take a quick tour of the Pi. So this is in a 3D printed enclosure. This is um, ABS, but you could of course print this in PLA if you prefer. Um, I have NinjaFlex for the button, so that's that's quite important because you need to have a flexible plastic membrane for those buttons. So all these green buttons and the shoulder buttons on the back are printed in NinjaFlex. And I've taken the screws out already, so this thing is ready to come apart and we can have a bit of a look inside. So I can power it off with the switch at the back here, and we can just snap this apart. So the first thing you'll notice is there is a lot of space left over. This this was originally designed to house a full-sized Raspberry Pi uh, B model, so a, a Pi 2 or a Pi 3 model B. And you can clearly see that with how much space there is around the Pi Zero here, and also with the, the uh, openings in the case where you would normally have the USB and Ethernet ports. So you can see I'm only running a 2000 milliamp hour lithium battery inside this, but because of the space that using the Pi Zero W, you're afforded a lot more space in the case. If you wanted to roll your own nickel metal hydride battery pack, that would be that would be a great use of all the extra space down here. Because of course, the Pi Zero W doesn't have any native audio output, so there's no speaker or audio amplifier inside this project. If I take the battery out, this device over here that the battery is plugged into is a PowerBoost 1000C. So that is what handles powering the Pi off a 3.7 volt LiPo when the Pi takes 5 volt USB. This does the voltage boosting there, but it also handles charging the battery through the USB port that you can access right from the bottom. So in this, in this project, you have a Game Boy that you can charge from a USB outlet. That's fantastic. We can take I won't take the, the Pi off because there's not really much to see there, but we just have the, the Pi Zero W seated on top of the touch display here, and that's connected with this big IDC cable to just another circuit board that uh, handles the, the button user inputs. And of course, as I mentioned before, this does have shoulder buttons on the back. So not only can you do classic NES games, but you can do SNES games as well, and games that require more complicated controllers. Let's quickly go through a boot sequence of the Pi Girl to see how quickly it boots and what interacting with it is like. So I'll just power that on. And that takes uh, a little while to boot. So while that's going, I'll take you over to the project page and we can have a look at that. This is the Game Girl project page on our website, so you can find this by going to the Projects tab. And this is documenting our build process. So you can see I was able to print the entire case in one pass on, on a TAS 5 3D printer. And this was our first time printing with NinjaFlex, so things got a, a bit stringy. If you were going to attempt this yourself, definitely have a bit of a research on NinjaFlex first for some optimal settings. I hear that increasing the print speed to about 200% is a good way to get started. Then we come down and we have the, the first boot, a quick look at how everything is assembled, and then a few modifications to the original Adafruit instructions on how to get this running with your Pi Zero W. Most notably, the version of RetroPi that you need to run is not the same as the version that runs on Model 2 and 3. So you need to download the version that's for 0 and 1. So following this link to the downloads page of RetroPi, this 
This version on the left here is the version that you would need to download and run if you're going to be using a Raspberry Pi 0W. So that is the complete boot and now we're in the uh, emulation station or uh, RetroPie interface so you can move around to configure RetroPie. At the moment I only have one game, Super so Mario Brothers, so that's in the uh, NES emulator so I can enter that with my A key and that drops us right in and then I could start the game by pressing that again. It, it, it's a bit hard to see but there is there's an entry there for Super Mario Brothers. If you're thinking of building your own Pi Girl or even just installing RetroPie on another Raspberry Pi, you may have a few questions. So if you check out on our website the tutorials section, we have an entire section dedicated to getting RetroPie running smoothly on your Raspberry Pi. So this covers things like updating uh, controller mapping for what buttons do what, saving games, and even just setting up the RetroPie. Because we have a Raspberry Pi Zero W running the whole show on this Pi Girl, we should be able to maintain the games on it wirelessly, and indeed we can. So this Raspberry Pi is connected to the same network that my computer is running on, so I can access it in the File Explorer by navigating to its host name after two backslashes. So backslash backslash retro Pi. And now we're accessing a special shared directory within the Raspberry Pi where we can manage, say, the ROMs, the games that we want to play. So in the directory called ROMs, these are the ROMs that are available, that are offered by RetroPi. And for a Raspberry Pi Zero, it would probably be best to keep your ROMs to the older generation, like NES and SNES. That's where it performs really, really well. It might not work so well for much heavier emulation like Nintendo 64. But anyway, we can navigate to that NES directory and there we have the Super Mario Brothers ROM that I was running at the start of this video. So there you have it, a Raspberry Pi retro games emulator in the form factor of an old school games console. If you have any questions about how to build your own or if you have any suggestions for improvements, like if you want to respin the case so it's a little more appropriate for the Raspberry Pi Zero W, we'd love to hear from you on our forums. I'll see you next time.